Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard from Mushroom Wonderland and today I went for a walk in the forest. Uh, it's May 3rd and it has been really dry out but I needed to try to find some mushrooms for a show and tell for a mushroom uh, educational workshop that I'm doing on Sunday and at that venue there's just not that many mushrooms. So I came to a different habitat to try to find some mushrooms and I've actually found quite a few. I've got a pretty good basket load of mushrooms right here so I'd like to just describe these mushrooms for you and uh, so you can know what's growing out there right now maybe in your neck of the woods so join me on this episode to learn about a basket full of spring mushrooms welcome to mushroom wonderland all right it's a little bit of a windy day out here in the woods i don't know if you can hear that it's a little bit sketchy i think the weather's changing you know it's been like in the upper 70s the last couple of days which has been crazy but i think the weather might be changing and that might be a chance of rain which is a good thing because we are severely lacking rain but there are still mushrooms growing out here so today i've just been on this nice walk and look at all these cool mushrooms i have in my basket so i just want to help describe these mushrooms one by one um so you can see what's growing out here and i'm in western washington right in the puget sound right around sea level and one of our biggest most eye-catching mushrooms that come out in the spring is this guy and this is called amanita africa or amanita africa or amanita aprica uh that's one thing about latin is that you can kind of pronounce it however you want as long as you pronounce all the syllables and say it with confidence you're not really wrong but um you know amanita amanita you know tomato tomato uh, this is a very beautiful mushroom and it might remind you of the Mario mushroom, right? The red one with the white spots. It's really closely related. So it comes out of this egg-like thing. You see that cup at the bottom of the stem there? That's actually kind of like an egg and the top of the shell is this white material that's stuck all over the top of the cap. That is the actual top of that egg shell that we call a vulva and it basically sprouts out of that and then it opens up and when the gills get mature it's got a thin veil that covers the gills until the spores get mature and then it falls away and it forms this little ring on the stem right there we call that the stipe in mushroom talk but um and then it reveals these white gills that are going to have white spores so this one uh, is related to death caps and also related to like caesar's mushrooms or um, you know, the American Caesar, like the Amanita, Jacksonii, these are good edible mushrooms. So this whole genus of mushrooms um, is very, uh, has a lot of variety. Uh, some mycology folk just study Amanita. And uh, there's a great book by Britt Bunyard, uh, Amanita of North America. And you can learn a lot. This one we just commonly call the Sunshine Amanita, and it is toxic. So don't be eating this. It does look delicious, though. It actually looks like apricots. And I've always thought that must be why it's called Aprica or Aprica. But uh, this one contains muscimol, iobotenic acid. Um, these are toxins that can affect the GI system and uh, make you really sick. So um, don't be eating these. Amanita section, Amanita. This one, Amanita uh, Aprica. Amanita Aprica is usually how I say it. I like to switch it up just to be confusing and difficult. All right, I got another one right here. And this mushroom... Looks a lot like Amanita Africa, but this one is Amanita pantheranoides, or the Western panther cap. And look at that, it's got a good example of what it looks like when that partial veil is intact and those gills are getting ready to drop spores. It's not completely detached yet. And you can see those eggshell pieces on top of the cap. So this one's more brown than apricot colored. And uh, there's been some crazy stories about people eating these and they do have disassociative delirium type uh, psychoactive effects uh, along with um, gastrointestinal upset and uh, neurological problems and stuff so it is a heavy toxin and it's also a uh, delirium and an intoxicant and some people have tried to use these recreationally and rarely do they ever do it twice because it's so unpleasant um, I've heard stories of people just having the craziest fever dreams on these things and actually like harming themselves or coming to harm because of these mushrooms. So uh, the Amanita pantheranoides, it's a beautiful mushroom, but one that you should just leave behind, just like the Amanita africa, unless you want to take it and study it, that's fine too. Uh, I'm not trying to pick shame. If you want to pick a mushroom for whatever reason, you're a child of the earth, I think you deserve to pick mushrooms if you want. But this one's got this very bulbous 
uh, vulva down there and then look it's got uh, kind of a ringed collar at the base and so that one there you can see a good example of that ring that collared sheath around it and then that brown color with the white spots so so Ammonida is just a huge genus of beautiful but um, oftentimes toxic mushrooms so I would leave this one behind um, I'm actually sitting on this log right here and there's this flush of mushrooms right here let me flip my camera look at these guys now these are the false funeral bell known as Cuneromyces and Cuner was a mycologist in the early 1900s and this is named after him this used to be in Foliota and it's got a brown spore print and um, they're very hygrophonous so that means the cap turns very pale when it gets dry um, and these grow on wood, just like deadly gallerina. So gallerina marginata can look very close to this. has a ring, but uh, the funeral bell deadly. This one said to be edible, but really cautioned against. I just wouldn't go around eating little brown wood dwelling mushrooms like this if I were you, even though I'm sure these ones are the cuneromyces. Not really worth it. They're so little, but you know, there's a nice flush of them right here. So it's refreshing to see a good fruiting of mushrooms right now in the woods. Um, and let's look at the basket again. I know you're checking these big guys out. We're going to talk about those in just a second. But look at this. This one has these rusty spots on it. And just kind of plain and white. You know, we would call this shape uh, Clytosaboid or Clytosaby like And Clytosaby used to cover just tons of different mushrooms fell into that genus. Now there's very few actually in Clytosaby. But this one... Um, is Rhodocolibia maculata. So this one gets little red spots on it. You see that on the cap? These little red spots. And I was surprised to see these. There was a few of them growing next to each other in a little cluster out here. Um, and Rhodocolibia, not that common in this neck of the woods. So I was excited to see such a huge, handsome mushroom. Rhodocolibia, um, unknown edibility. All right, okay, let's talk about it. Look at these. Look at these guys that I just found. I know you want to talk about these. These are some woodland morels that I have just found just a minute ago out in this conifer dominant forest. So a forest where chanterelles grow in the fall, also producing morels in the spring. And these are pretty large. We call this Marcella norvegiensis or the Norwegian forest morel. It actually matches that one or Marcella eosfera which might be synonymous either way these are true morels delicious edible morels and these actually can grow for a long time couple months till they get full maturity like this I've been watching this one for a long time and it's finally big and and ready to pick and don't worry you can pluck mushrooms or cut them it doesn't make a difference to the fungus at all um, actually, there's studies that show that sometimes plucking them stimulates the mycelium and more fruiting bodies can come out of there. Um, but if you're collecting for science, uh, always collect the entire stem base. But Marcella norvegiensis, it's spring and these are the most popular spring mushrooms right now. All across the country, people are looking for morels and east of the Rockies, the blonde morel is the popular one growing with different hardwood trees. But here you can find these. We have a lot of different species of morel here in the Pacific Northwest, actually. Uh, maybe a dozen different species where out east, y'all only have one or two types. But this one is a little bit more rare. And if I find it, you know, this is one that you kind of want to keep the patch a secret because uh, you only get a handful to put on your steak once a year. Um, and they always come back in the same general area, but I've been tracking this colony of them for quite a while and they seem to have jumped the trail where they used to fruit on one side of the trail. Now they're on the other side of the trail, but growing right out of the moss, usually out of a hillside. I'll put some pictures up here so that if you want to pause and get a really good look at this beautiful, beautiful Marcella species. So make sure to cook your morels. Um, there's landscape morels popping up right now in urban landscapes and in wood chips and mulch, uh, compost piles and gardens. But this one you might encounter out in the deep forest. All of these morels, no matter what color they are, are really what they look like. Um, they all need to be cooked well. Uh, people have got poisoned and died from um, raw or undercooked morels if they had a bad reaction to them. So cook your morels and uh, keep it a secret, man. That's number one rule in mushrooming is that if you find a killer spot, just keep it to yourself. So let's look back into the basket. What else do we got? Oh, we got this guy. This one 
you can see how bright colored it is. I don't know if the camera is picking up just how brightly yellowish, kind of greenish colored this is. And it was kind of growing singularly, which is sort of rare. Usually they're growing in huge troops. And this one known as the sulfur tuft or Hyphaloma fasciculari. So this is a toxic mushroom that grows on rotting wood and it would glow really bright if I shined a UV light on it right there. Um, and these are toxic. They'll cause really bad GI upset. And so they grow in clusters off of hardwood and uh, they always have that fluorescent green color to them and they'll fluoresce super brightly under a UV light and uh, they're extremely bitter. So if you were to try to eat these, you would probably be discouraged right away because they're super duper bitter. And uh, we call this one the sulfur tuft. It's probably one of the first mushrooms that ever got on my radar in my life. I remember these growing on a huge stump out in my woods behind my house and I, I remember being fascinated with the huge cluster of these hyphaloma and there are some edible hyphaloma but kind of like the cuneromyces you know this might be one that you just want to avoid because it's just not um not that great uh and you could get it confused now look at this pointy capped guy this guy reminds me of gandalf or something right it's like the wizard hat let's see and if you look underneath in the light, can you see that pinkish tinge to the gills? This is in the common named family of pink gills or the Entoloma. So this one, probably Entoloma holocoineotum. This one grows out here in the woods and gets very umbinate. So that's kind of that nipple on top of the cap. And then it has pink gills. And this one's not associated with trees. They're just growing out on the side of the trail. And uh, inedible, you know, just not really of any culinary interest because they're just kind of small and scattered and uh, I don't know you know they might be edible nobody really tries these out so I don't know maybe you want to be the first one and leave it in the comments I don't know I'm not trying to encourage any craziness um what else do I have I have oh right here this one is in the common family fiber caps and can you see why look at the cap it's very fibrous and these have a medium brown spore print this one is in the genus Inosibi, and a lot of people just call these LBMs or little brown mushrooms. They kind of give little brown mushrooms a bad name. I mean, there's a lot of little brown mushrooms and a lot of them are poisonous. So that's why a lot of people avoid the little brown mushrooms, but the hallucinogenic mushrooms here in the Northwest are also little brown mushrooms. But anyhow, Inosibi, a huge genus. There's about 85 different species here that haven't even been described. So we just say Inosibi species or a fiber cap, and these contain something called muscarin that's quite toxic and uh, I am a moderator in one of the poisons help group where people post pictures of mushrooms that maybe their pets or kids had eaten and inosibi are way up on the list uh, with muscarin poisoning so muscarin is kind of a nasty toxin that will actually make you like um, salivate and weep out of your orifices cause really bad GI upset and could even cause like liver damage and kidney damage so again it's so small and insignificant you know if you don't know what you're doing don't be eating little brown mushrooms uh whether they're growing on the log or the side of the trail you know it's sketchy people go out and they just think like oh this, this is a magic mushroom i saw one in a magazine once and it looks nothing like that don't be reckless man because although i try to dispel mycophobia i try to steer people away from being afraid of mushrooms um there is a real and inherent risk in foraging wild mushrooms and eating them because although most of them are edible or non-toxic uh, the ones that are toxic will uh, get you sick and or kill you. So um, Inosibi, not known to be a deadly mushroom, but one that you'd probably regret eating. And if you were to pinch the stem off and lay this um, gill side down on a piece of paper, it would leave behind a medium brown colored spore print. And uh, Inosibi, huge genus. Don't even have any idea of what species this might be. Um, so I'm just going to put that back. What else do I got? Right here we have a little turkey tail so concentric different colored bands on top this one is pretty sad looking i know but it's got different bands of color on top white pores underneath and this one is the most highly studied medicinal mushroom in the world and they're easy to find they're growing on dead logs and stumps out here in the woods so the turkey tail you could pick some of these and just simply simmer them in some hot water you know it's suggested to go for a couple of hours but I don't know, the placebo effect is real too. So maybe 45 minutes, a little bit of local honey, a little lemon zest, and you can make an herbal tea straight from the forest. And these are super common, you can find them everywhere. So look for those concentric rings on top, 
Look for a white porous surface underneath. These ones are a little old. You could confuse it for trichaptum, uh, which is non-toxic. So if you got the wrong one, you're not really gonna hurt yourself. Um, but the turkey tail is a really common one, can be found in all seasons, in the spring, winter, summer, and fall. All you gotta do is call, so. I don't know about that last part. But anyways, that's kind of all I got for now. Just wanted to give you a little bit of an update on what I'm finding in the woods. I'm heading back to the car. Got a lot going on this weekend. I'm at the Olympia uh, Fungus Fair tomorrow giving two talks. Um, and then Sunday I'm doing a Mushroom Wonderland private foray. You can find that stuff out at mushroomwonderland.com. Uh, you can go to the description of this video and I'll put links to all my other social media. And if you want to support what I'm doing here, you could support me on Patreon for a $5 membership. That'd be super cool. Uh, and help me to just pursue my goal to help educate about mushrooms and uh, to enjoy this wonderful hobby. I hope that you're having fun out there. And uh, get out in the woods and uh, leave me a comment. Tell me how the mushrooms are in your neck of the woods. And we'll see you on the next episode. Much love, everyone. Peace out.